All right, guys. I have the uh, Winter Blade Factor here with the flipper lever thing that in my video I thought was kind of silly and awkward. And while it works, when you hold the knife, it feels really weird. So Brian from Winter Blade sent me one of his new backspacers. So it's from his first batch. I think he did a couple of prototypes, but he sent me this one so that I could replace the flip lever with a backspacer, kind of making this more, if you will, a traditional knife. So I don't know how long this video is going to take me to take this apart, put that in and put it back together, but let's see. Um, it does have a captive pivot, which means you only need something on one side. I have found that a nickel fits best, but what I've also found is that the pivot actually moves a little bit. You may or may not be able to see that. So you got to kind of move it to where it stops. Then you can go ahead and loosen the pivot. So we'll see how this all works. I hope I can get it back together without too much drama. So we shall see, won't we? And then I want to put this backspacer in. And I think, I mean, my hope is and my thought is I'm going to like the knife a lot more. Not that I don't like it. It's just, it is a little odd to me. Um, and then all of the body screws and stuff are T6. So I don't know if I got to take the pocket clip off. I don't know. We're going to see if I can just... And it is a little funny because there's a bunch of magnets in here. So as you go to put your tool on it, it's kind of magnetized and tries to pull it kind of the other way. You know what I mean? So... We shall see how this goes. Um, I don't know. I think I do need to take the clip off. Or at least this screw is probably longer. Mm, yes, it is. I'm going to put that one over there by itself. And just to get it out of the way, we're just going to take the clip all the way off. Which I didn't need to because this is a small screw. But we're going to just... Leave that over there. Out of the way, one less thing to mess with. Now, maybe I can just open this one side. Sure, if I put the tool down. Now, I was going to use my donut mat. And because there's a bunch of magnets, it wants to pull this thing around. And there's some parts and pieces in here. So I got to deal with that now as to where this part and piece went. No, uh row. -oh. Ro -ro. All right, so we're going to take out the flip lever and we're going to insert the backspacer, which does have a groove in it for the blade and a little uh, lip there that's going to go under or into that little space there. Um. See, I need to open the blade and get that out of the way. Take a little finagling here for sure, but we'll get it in there, I think. Gosh, jeez. It's almost there. don't really want to take the blade all the way apart and out because that just seems like more of a pain to me since it already moved the washer over to the magnet. So dealing with the magnets when you're taking it apart is a little bit, I'm not going to say problematic, but awkward. And this doesn't really want to line up there very well. So I'm going to take this out. 
And now I'm going to start to wonder if I'm going to be able to get it all back together in the orientation that it's supposed to be. We'll see. We'll get it going here. I just got to get this to line up right on this piece. And it's wanting to argue with me. Which is all right. We'll sort it out. You got to just got to put it all on at the same time and get it in. So it's not binding up on anything, right? So there's that. So now I can take the blade and I know the blade goes right there. And I know that this washer went right there. And then the lock, as you can see here is a magnet and this is the actual lock. You can see if we can get that to go in there and just lock the blade open which is what it naturally wants to do, which is cool. And now what I've got to figure out is where does this little piece go? Because when I opened the cover, and I think it goes right in here. It's a little spacer inside of here that just got moved around with the magnet. So I'm not loving that aspect that when you take it apart, the magnets want to pull it all around. Now, if I had left the pocket clip on right there, which I think I'm going to just put that back on right now to hold that spacer in place. So that was basically the nut, if you will, for the pocket clip pull. And then you can see here, it's got some little, I don't know, Delron or something's there that help keep the blade centered between this magnet and the other magnet. So then this should just slip right on other than the magnets want to do magnet things. Again, I told you I didn't know how long this was gonna take. <laughs> yeah, there's hmm. Gotta be a better-ish way to do this so that the magnets are not working against you every step. We'll see. Let's put this one back in here with the blade open or closed. I do like the way, I think I'm, I'm gonna like the way this looks, assuming I can get it all lined up and back together without the magnets sucking themselves together. All right, I think that that's probably how it goes. So let's put one screw up in here to hold it. Yeah, this is painful. Normally you wouldn't need to take these apart, but it's where we're at. So there we go. Now it's all together. Let's put this one back in back here and then we'll put the pivot in and put that last screw in and then we'll be done. So maybe like 10, 12 minutes. Hopefully it still works right. And everything stayed together where it was supposed to stay together. That's what I'm hoping. But before I flip it around and operate it, I wanna get this stuff tight so that it hopefully will stay even better together. Yeah, it even wants to magnetize the, the coin and your tools and your screws and nuts. Yeah, it's kind of a interesting thing. Like it's the whole magnet thing is something I didn't even think about. Um, as being a potential issue, taking it apart. But yeah, it wants to magnetize your hardware 
wants to magnetize your tool so that it just makes it a little tougher. But I think we have got it back together. And with any luck, it's centered and it will actually open and close. So there you have it. Now, when you hold it, it feels really good. It's not a perfect thing here. And let me move this mat out of the way because it plays with the light a little bit. That's why I did say I was going to try to use my pink donut mat, but the lighting was really weird when I did that. So this doesn't, it still has a bit of a hump here and it's not fidgety anymore, right? The carbon fiber lines up and looks really good here. Almost like it was made like one piece. The pattern is pretty close and all that. And yes, there's some smudges on the blade now, but I, it's still fidgety for you fidget guys. I, I don't know. I was not a big fan of this flipper lever, but I am more of a fan now of the knife than I was before. Let's give this a little tighten. It is a little deceiving because the pivot kind of moves. Oops. So getting it tight and the right stiffness, you got to play with a little bit, which is fine. It's like most every knife. But you can get it a little too tight so that it doesn't actually uh, close all the way. So all in all, I like it better this way. What do you guys think? I know everybody thinks this is the fidget monster and all of that, and they're not quite wrong. But those of you that have this knife and have handled this knife, please comment down below what you think of this deployment method. Do you use it a lot? Does it feel awkward in your hand if you're actually going to use the knife for cutting tasks? I know, God forbid. Um, and do you think the backspacer is the way to go? I, you guys tell me. I think you know where I stand. There you go. Please go check out the full video of my first real impressions and stuff of this knife uh, over there in the corner. Thanks, guys. And Brian, thank you very much for sending the backspacer. I greatly appreciate it. And it is a totally different knife to me with the backspacer rather than the flipper lever.